Senator Shumlin, can you talk about how Entergy is uh, lobbying legislators and the public with the aim of having another vote um, in the legislature next year that could possibly overturn the Senate decision to close Vermont Yankee in 2012? And do you think they could possibly be successful with this strategy? You know, it's a democracy, and uh, there are a lot of Republicans and Democrats running for the legislature, and we'll have to see the outcome of the election. The Speaker of, house, of the House uh, has made very clear that the legislature has voted on this question. Obviously, if the speakership were to change, uh, if the new president pro tem come in, we have to wait and see. As governor, there's no question where I stand. Should I be elected? And can you talk about uh, the issue of a possible federal preemption challenge about Vermont Yankee and what you would do as governor to assert Vermont's authority regarding this issue? I would ask Andrew G. Louisiana to keep their word. They, you know, let's remember, they passed the bill that gave the legislature the authority to determine whether or not it was in the public interest to have the Public Service Board issue a strip of public good. Uh, that bill was passed when I was not in the legislature. It passed unanimously by the legislature. It was supported by Brian Doobie and the governor, and Ashley Louisiana. And Ashley Louisiana signed an MOU at that time, agreeing that they would abide by that decision. So what I would say to Ashley Louisiana is what I've always said, keep your word if you know how. A lot of the concern you've been voicing about Vermont Yankee seems tied to its ownership and management by Entergy. And uh, at the same time, there, there has been talk in recent months um, that there, there's a chance the plant could be sold to another company. And I'm wondering if that would change the picture at all for you. Uh, how would you feel about Vermont Yankee and its possible relicensing if it ended up being owned by someone else other than Energy? You know, I have a love for old cars. And I've sold a few in my day. And I've never found that if I had a clunker and I sold it to my neighbor, that it would run any better. So your real concern, I mean, it sounds like I was trying to sort of differentiate between your concern about Entergy's management and your concern about uh, your your uh, view that the plant is, as you put it, a clunker. What, what's the bigger problem here? The bigger pro you know, the bigger problem really relates to the news on Friday. I don't think that it has sunk in to Vermonters uh, and to Brian Doobie uh, the seriousness of the challenge that we have there. This is the worst man-made environmental disaster, in my judgment, uh, in the history of this great state. It's going to be a long time cleaning it up. And it's going to cost a lot of money. And I have never known anyone anxious to buy an environmental disaster at any price. About that statement that it's the worst, can you give us a sense what what else has happened that you're comparing this to? Well, we've had oil spills, small ones. Uh, you know, we've had some environmental challenges before as a state. But let me be very clear: this is not talked about much. In the other nuclear power plants, where there have been leaks, they leak tritium. They did not leak cesium and strontium. If we don't pull that, extract that, all of it from the ground, it's going into the groundwater. That would be a huge challenge for Vermont. That is the Connecticut River. That aquifer feeds into the river. It feeds all of the wells, most of the wells of the town of Vernon. That is the water system there. And you know, my concern is, I think about uh, my electrician. Uh, he's helping me on a number of uh, uh, renovation jobs that I've done. And uh, you know, he and his wife, their only asset is their home in Vernon. And they've always been very supportive of the plan because they thought it was safe. And they thought it was well run. Now they turn to me and they say, you know, this is our only asset. If that's in our well, our home has no value. You know, this is real time. And I always say to my friends up here who sometimes have difficulty understanding the magnitude of the human loss here and the human struggle for Vermonters, let's not forget when that plant was sited, there were two sites for it. One was as far from Vermont as we could get and still be on our soil. As close to Massachusetts and New Hampshire as we could get it, that's where it ended up. The other was being cooled by the waters of Lake Champlain. Location, Shelburne. Had 
that choice of site been chosen? And we had tritium in the lake, tritium in the wells, cesium and estantium on the way. Would we still be asking, can we keep it running? You seem to be saying that the further degradation, you know, the, the, the uh, if this were to leak into the aquifer, it would obviously make matters worse. For those who, therefore, don't take that step and agree with you and take that step to install those additional four pumps um, and don't prevent further degradation, um, what sort of liability, political liability, what sort of, um, you know, what's on their head, essentially? Do you mean Entergy's head or? Uh, or, or the politi political leaders who don't share your view and, and, and the problem gets worse. What sort of liability you know, do they face? This next governor is going to face multiple challenges on multiple fronts, from balancing a budget to dealing with getting Vermont the most reliable and cheap electric price we can because all our contracts are coming up, to creating jobs and putting Vermonters back to work. My point is, this is a job interview. It's the most important job interview that Vermonters conduct. Brian Doobie is continually an apologist for the stockholders of Venture Louisiana. I've been consistent in standing up for the people of the state of Vermont. That's the choice. But you're saying it's not too late to keep this well, stuff from getting out of the act. It's too late, let me be clear. When it hits a drinking water line at 220 feet and it's gone through the bedrock, we have a serious situation on our hands. It's going to be years cleaning up that situation. It's going to cost millions and millions of dollars. What I'm saying now is the governor and your next governor has to do everything to mitigate the damage. One simple request, spend the $200,000, put in additional four pumps immediately to ensure that we can extract as much of that contaminated water as possible. You can't get it all. It's headed for the bedrock. We get that. We understand it's a disaster. The question for the next governor is, how big a disaster? And should Louisiana can make some small investments now to protect us from a bigger disaster than we're already facing? Do you have any concern about um, James Foltz? His term is coming up in March. Um, who would you replace him with? Well, we'll, we'll have a chance to uh, discuss all of those cabinet secretaries and the rest uh, should we win this race. I'm going to spend the next 22 days focusing on winning this race. Thank you.